I'd like to thank you all for joining us. This is the uh, Visual and Performing Arts panel uh, coming to you from Sealands Grove, Pennsylvania, Susquehanna University. Um, my name is Sarah Adams. I am the manager of music admissions and uh, the representative for the admissions office on tonight's webinar. Um, I'll be moderating uh, the panel. Quickly, just a few housekeeping items. We are going to uh, record the webinar and post it on uh, the YouTube channel sometime tomorrow. And tonight we're utilizing the chat for any questions or comments that you'd like to bring to our panel. They'll introduce themselves in just a moment. Uh, please continue to leave your areas of interest, your hometown and state in the chat, and we will begin. So we're going to take just a brief moment for everyone on our panel to introduce themselves, and then we'll dive a little bit deeper. So we're going to start um, in alphabetical order with um, art and graphic design. Hey, um, I'm Mark Fertig. I am the chair of the Department of Art and Design at Susquehanna and professor of graphic design. Should I go next? Should we stay with faculty? Or, yes, or... please, David. Okay. All right, thanks. Um, I'm David Steinow. I'm the chair of the Department of Music and uh, my instrument is voice. So I'm one of the voice teachers. And I'm Eric Viker. I'm a professor of theater. My specialty is theater operations. I'm a production manager and occasionally technical director as needed. And I am currently serving as the department head of the, the Department of Theater. And our student panelists this evening, could you take a quick moment and introduce yourselves? Sure, hi, I'm Annie Boat. I'm a graphic design senior with a minor in photography and advertising. Um, yeah, super excited to be here. Hi, I'm Kathleen. I'm a senior from uh, Vernon, New Jersey with a music education major and a flute concentration. Hi, I'm Annabelle Lucas. I'm a senior theater performance major, but I'm involved in most other things in the theater as well. Thank you all very much. Um, just reminding our guests this evening that um, all of your afternoon for some of you, um, all of your questions can go over in the chat and we will uh, we'll try to address them as we go, but we've saved some time at the end specifically for a Q&A. Um, we're going to get kicked off here. The uh, faculty chairs are going to spend a little bit of time telling us about their um, programs and some, some additional highlights. So I'll turn it over to you. You mean me, Sarah? OK. Um, all right, let me share my screen here. And here we go. Um, can everybody see that? Can you guys see my screen? Okay. Um, well, like I said, I'm Mark. I'm in the Department of Art and Design. I've been at Susquehanna since 2002 when I founded the graphic design program way back when. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit uh, for a few minutes about our department and what we have to offer. Um, so welcome to everybody, all you folks from all over. Um, in our department, we offer three separate degree programs, um, actually four, when you think about the fact that we have two different degree programs in the graphic design area. We offer the BFA, which is the pre-professional degree for people who want to be graphic designers for a living. And then we also offer a, a smaller BA program, which is kind of like graphic design light. And that's for people who have another major and want to augment that major with graphic design education. But for those of you that are interested in becoming a professional graphic designer, we would want you in our BFA program. Uh, the department also offers a BA in studio arts and students in that program choose between concentrations in painting and drawing, which is one thing, not two things, um, and photography. And then we also offer the BA in art history. I'm gonna talk primarily um, for the next few minutes about our graphic design program, because that's really what Susquehanna's department is known for and what we get the most interest for um, 
at the prospective student level. So I am primarily going to focus on what we do in the graphic design program, though during the Q&A session, I'll be happy to answer questions about all of the arts at Susquehanna. So one question I get a lot when I do these sorts of functions is what classes will I be taking during my first year? So all of the art programs at Susquehanna are, are really four year programs. So our preference is that you come in as a freshman major. Um, and I know the other department chairs are gonna echo that sentiment as well. Doesn't mean to say that a person can't switch to one of our majors after they get here. But with our BFA program, there is sort of a, um, some, something like a time limit to when you can do that and not have to attend for a fifth year or something. Um, but typically all students will take um, an art class in their first semester, Foundations of Art One, which is the typical collegiate art class that you'll take at any American institution of higher education. At Susquehanna, we have a, a sort of college 101 style course called Perspectives that all freshmen are enrolled in in their first semester and then um, <clears throat> writing and thinking and a central curriculum elective course. And those four courses will typically make up the student's first semester. In the second semester, you'll really dive in, in our department, you'll take three art courses. Um, and this is true of graphic design majors as well as studio majors. Foundations of Art II, the design students will take computer applications in graphic design, which is the Illustrator and Photoshop course. They'll take their first art history course and then another central curriculum elective. Um, now, of course, that can vary from student to student, but this is a typical first year experience in our department. And I wanted to show some sample graphic design projects, the kind of things that we do in the program. So we generally will start our students off in that computer applications course where you learn Illustrator and Photoshop and you learn the rudiments of working in those programs at a pretty high level. So we do these sorts of projects, which are just engineered to teach people the basics of using Illustrator and Photoshop, and they can get pretty sophisticated, but nevertheless. Then we segue into identity design. So our students will design a lot of logos. They'll design a lot of sort of like t-shirty style graphics, um, fun projects. Um, we stress idea generation and professional level execution of projects. This hey, Mark, is the, yeah. Just gonna in interrupt for one second. Your slides are not progressing with your- Really? Yes. So we are still on the title page. Are you serious? Yes. Oh, well, thanks for interrupting me. Let me pause this and then do it again. That's not good, is it? You guys missed all the good stuff. How about now? Let me yes. see. Did it change? It's changing now? All right, well, I'll just go back to the work. <laughs> so this is where I was talking about um, starting off in Adobe Illustrator. This is um, Jamie Dunphy. We do a lot of self-portraits. Uh, she graduated a couple years ago. Um, you can see a watch now, right? Not if you can see a watch on your screen. Okay, great. Um, these are the logos that I was talking about. We do a lot of brand work, a lot of identity work, corporate identity. This is a stationary package. Um, pretty clever. It's for a distillery and you can see the little bottles reversed out of the deer. That's a nice touch. Um, so stationary package. We do a lot of um, branding work. So this is a, a restaurant menu and some packaging. Um, see here's our famous beer project uh, we were one of the first schools if maybe the first school in the country to do uh, uh, a beer design project like this and Susquehanna sent all of its students home last week and our junior package design class is right in the middle look at I see my student Annie shaking her head um, because doing the six pack is such a rite of passage in our program. We don't allow students to like make printouts and glue them onto the six pack. They actually have to construct the six pack out of paper and it, and it has to have six bottles in it. And I have to be able to lift it up and swing it about and not have the bottles fall out. 
But since we sent the students home last week, they don't have access to the lab and to the, our, our big fancy printers anymore. So I'm not gonna, they're, they're not gonna build the six pack. And that'll be the first time in our history that that's happened. And everybody is very upset. There's a lot of angst about this on campus, particularly from the seniors who had to do it. And they wanna make sure that the, the juniors have to do it as well. Here's some DVD package. This was a best of show winner at the Addy Awards um, a couple years ago. Some posters for theatrical works, do a lot of poster design, a lot of real world projects. This is an ag campaign um, for Bates Motel on A&E. This was a gold winner at the National Addy Awards a couple years ago, because it's super smart. Um, and a lot of publication design. Um, so Annie is in this class right now and is about, no, she is working as of Monday on this project. So this is some sample spreads from one of the annual report projects that we do. This one's for the, um, the Truth Initiative to quit smoking. Um, and then here are some editorial spreads from a magazine have a lot of students working in the magazine industry. And of course we do quite a lot of web work. So this is a homepage and some phones for National Geographic and app design. So we do a fair mix of traditional print work and digital work. And our students are able to go out into the world and get jobs in all of those sorts of industries. So the thing about the graphic design program at Susquehanna is that we we're really proud of the fact that we have what you would call elite national outcomes. Um, our placement rate in the graphic design industry is 96% um, throughout over the entire course of the history of our program. 90, 96% of our graduates are working professionals in the graphic design industry. Um, and consequently, we have a great network of alumni in most of the major media markets in the United States. And that ends up being the way that a lot of our students get jobs is through our alumni, um, through the network connections that we have. As a matter of fact, just a little while ago, we had six alumni from all over the country do a Zoom meeting just like this one with all of our current students, which Annie tells me she got a lot out of. So. Um, we're always excited to do those things. We have a really high level of engagement with our alumni. Um, we talk to them and visit with them and have them come back into the classroom all the time. Um, and these are this, this slide's a little bit overwhelming, but it sort of should be um, because these are all of the places that Susquehanna alumni work. And so lots of, I don't know if you can see my cursor or not, but um, lots of national magazines, um, and then lots of media conglomerates like Pixar and all of these television networks, sort of very interesting through the election cycle. Um, we just had our CNN person in the alumni event we did this afternoon, but we have dueling web designers at CNN and Fox News. Would have been nice to have them both, but I couldn't get the other one. Um, so we have designers at a lot of professional sports teams, and then in the center column as in-house designers at a lot of well-known national brands, um, at a lot of uh, national not-for-profits, including places like um, the creative director at the National 9-11 Memorial and a designer at the United Nations. And then these funny names over here on the right are just sort of some of the traditional graphic design and advertising agencies where we have people working, um, a lot less likely that you would have heard of many of these companies. And then we have a lot of students who work in higher ed, um, a lot of designers at other universities, places like Princeton and even Bucknell up the street. Um, a lot of hospitals and things like that too, but I didn't really include those. If I guess if you want to take a closer look at this list, you can watch the recording afterwards, maybe pause it. Um, and, um, these are some of our alums. This is my last slide. 
um, and the Instagram address, don't forget the U, Susquehanna U underscore graphic design is our Instagram address if you want to connect with us that way. Um, okay, I'm going to stop my share. Thank you guys very much. Okay. Uh, Dr. Steinow, why don't you go ahead and speak about the Department of Music? Okay, thank you. In the Department of Music, we also have four degrees. We have the Bachelor of Music degree, which is the, the, the big degree, um, with three majors within the Bachelor of Music degree, music education, performance, or composition. And then we have a smaller degree, the Bachelor of Arts in Music, which allows students to double major in music and almost anything else. We've had all kinds of combinations. We have students, we have quite a few students double majoring in theater right now, music and theater, more than more than usual, I, I would say, which is great to see, but it can be it can be anything. We have a Bachelor of Arts in Music right now who's also majoring in um, earth and environmental sciences in someone who graduated last year in physics. Um, so the sciences are, are a popular combination actually with the Bachelor of Arts in Music. We also welcome non-majors to participate in the ensembles, to take lessons, to take classes. And we have a number of minors that non-majors can also, can also pursue, including an interdisciplinary ma a minor that's maybe three years old, four years old, I'm asking Professor Viker, in, um, in um, arts management, which is um, uh, sponsored by the Department of Music, the Department of Theater, and also the Sigmund Weiss School of Business. And that's, that's turned out to be a, a very popular option. I think that one of the things that makes the Department of Music at Susquehanna really special is that I think we are just the right size. We're small enough that um, there are really intensive personal interactions between the faculty and, and students and also among the students themselves, while at the same time, we're big enough to have large ensembles that do some pretty amazing things. Um, by large ensembles, of course, I mean band, orchestra, choir, jazz band, and so on. And so I thought I would also share my screen for a couple of minutes and show you um, a highlights video. Um, there are some Christmassy things on here, which is appropriate for the season. So if you give me just a second. Okay, here we go. It's about four minutes.
Okay, we're back. Yes. Okay. Uh, so let me mention one other thing that I think makes us um, unique, really. You would have to study that video that, that I just showed really carefully to notice how many students are in choir and then a few minutes later in band or in orchestra. That is practically unheard of. That is something that I had never encountered um, before I started teaching at, at Susquehanna. Not only do we make it possible with our scheduling for students to be to play the, the flute in the band and to sing in the choir and maybe even play a different instrument in orchestra like violin or viola or something. Um, we, we have one student now who's a senior who has been in the choir, has played viola in orchestra and trumpet in band. So not only do we make it possible, but we encourage it. It's especially great for our music ed students to have that kind of experience. And, and really that is, it's not unheard of, but it's borderline unheard of for a school to, to welcome um, that kind of participation across ensembles and for the faculty not to force students to choose one thing. Of course you have to specialize, you have to have one instrument that's your main concentration but you can still take lessons on the other instruments you can play those instruments in in ensembles even in the stadium band you can play an instrument that you don't even play well that's well that's welcomed and it's and for and for and I, I don't say that disparagingly at all that's especially great for music ed students who who are just gaining confidence on maybe their third or fourth instrument and then they get to actually play it in the stadium in the stadium band that really is 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 unique in my in my experience. Um, so uh, those are the things that I hope to talk about. And Sarah, if I left out anything crucial, you can jump in. Otherwise, I think that's probably my time. Thank you. And uh, so go right ahead, Eric. Thank you very much. Um, Department of Theater, we offer focused education in performance, production design, and theater studies. So we have three emphases, but I think it's important to note that we do call them emphases, they're not separate majors, because at the undergraduate level, we encourage our students to appreciate 
whether you're an actor or a technician or a manager or a historian, a budding historian, uh, appreciate, understand, and be able to speak the languages of your colleagues in the larger discipline of theater. And we're known for that comprehensive approach to the art practice of theater as a profession. And it's important that we recognize that it's, uh, theater is a way of exploring human communication and culture, our place in the world. Uh, theater are the stories we tell. And so we are storytellers, we're trying to sort out our, where we belong, what, what we're doing in the greater universe. Um, oddly enough, we're able to focus that right down to becoming something um, practical, and something, something that can help students uh, develop a career path either in theater or perhaps alongside theater in a different direction. Students who study performing here receive rigorous classic acting training. We're grounded in that Stanislavskian tradition, that classic Russian acting uh, foundation. Students interested in performing with, in musical theater, which is a common interest. Uh, we are happy to stay as much as possible as we collaborate with the Department of Music and we encourage those double majors that he mentioned, or his, uh, major minor configurations are often effective too. Uh, incoming students, first year students are often cast uh, in their first year if on the main stage or on the second stage. Uh, annual performance opportunities for, for the actors include our major musical production. Uh, we also do collaborate in design and operations with the opera program, and sometimes we see some crossover of uh, theater students who are also involved in Dr. Stiles opera program. A student-directed main stage play, we're excited about that. One of our seniors is selected to, to direct alongside uh, the faculty directors on the main stage, uh, which is a little bit rare at the, the undergraduate level. We have an intensive advanced acting workshop production, which tends to privilege the upper class students and juniors and seniors, but not exclusively. Uh, an experimental acting workshop production, which tends to go right down to the bare bones of acting, less production values and more um, studio style, black box style uh, performance where the students can dig into the, the uh, complexities and depths of, of challenging works of, of theater, works of drama. Uh, we do large scale classic plays, um, our main stage productions are academic courses, and so faculty directors, you get academic credit for the work, uh, if it fits into your GPA, and uh, the expectations are, are quite high in the professional level expectations. We do a vibrant second stage season, mostly student-generated works. Uh, this includes a Broadway cabaret, staged readings of plays by student playwrights. That's a way that we also uh, collaborate with our friends in the creative writing program. Uh, we had that, that second stage season also includes an annual 24-hour new play festival. Our production design students work in um, state-of-the-art facilities with professors who are working theater experts. I'm, I'm a union affiliated stagehand, have been for, for entirely too many years, um, but uh, we, we have those connections in the industry and students work right alongside us in well-equipped lighting shops, scene shops, professional quality costume shop. The strength of our program is firmly grounded in liberal arts education. So you're not getting a, a BFA in acting where you learn a lot about acting, but really don't get the context of why that's important as I started out to say. Uh, we offer excellent graduate school preparation for actors, designers, technicians, managers, theater scholars, future educators. Uh, content of our coursework sometimes resembles at the upper level of first year graduate school work. Students who are uh, study theater as, as you are prepared for a whole lot more than just uh, theater careers, should the gods of career uh, theater work and smile on you right away. We make sure that you have uh, the ability to, to parlay your experiences here into work in other related or even unrelated industries. We've seen majors who move into theater administration, event management, education, the business world, law school. It, it, it's fascinating when somebody says, what do you do with a theater degree? Our response is you do whatever you want. And we will prepare you to with project management and, and uh, collaboration skills to, to do precisely that. I'm going to quickly do a screen share. Um, see if we can do, let's see, who can share our panelists? Boom. All right. So do tell me if my slides don't advance, okay? But that would be ideal. All right. So we nurture the artist scholar. Can we see it as advancing? Right, it's all good. All right. Well, I studied theater at Susquehanna, some things I've already kind of mentioned. We do have a small class size and a small department overall. It tends to be um, a 10 to 1 ratio. Theater department faculty, we have four professors and one teaching artist. 
outcomes. Once again, our students do quite well in um, places they go for graduate programs. Our employers include some of the larger regional theater companies uh, and some of the significant tours. I think it's probably moved too quickly. Let me address something. We're already seeing through that, all right? But what I want to get to, quite frankly, is some of the pictures of our here we go, our um, some of our performance opportunities in in screen. So you can see some of the, the kind of plays that we put on, because folks like to see what they're designing or performing in. So the range you see is some of the larger scale musicals, see some of the smaller ensemble plays. We've done Dracula twice. Some interesting historical pieces, She Stoops to Conquer. We try to do Shakespeare every two years or so. A couple of them here for you to look at. Some contemporary works and some revisited and oh, some opera program stuff. There's Dr. Steiner, remember that one? Street scene. So, great. So that's, that's what I've got to offer. Look forward to any questions you might have, and I'll warn you that my questions are likely to be shot right down to Anna Bell, my student assistant, who can answer them from the student perspective better than I can. Thank you. I think this is a perfect time to hear from our student participants. And um, specifically, I would like to hear um, sort of how you ended up at Susquehanna, why you chose to pursue um, your undergraduate degree here, and um, just a quick glimpse into maybe one of your more memorable projects, performances um, that you'd like to share with our, um, with our participants. And Annie, why don't you kick us off? Great. Um, hi, I'm Annie. Um, so I heard of Susquehanna through um, a girl who went to my high school, um, who we actually talked about today uh, in an alum seminar we did earlier, but Annie Wise. And I heard about the program through her. And I visited Susquehanna and immediately I just love the campus. First off, we have a beautiful campus, but um, learning about the department and I actually met with Mark and our other professor, Amanda, and talked with them and just hearing their passion for the department and their professionalism was just really um, kind of a game changer for me. I really hadn't heard that at other programs. Um, the amount of opportunities and alumni success is pretty impressive and really stood out to me. So that was really the main reason I came here was for the graphic design program, along with just the rest of campus is so lovely and nice and everyone here is just works really hard to make it a great place to be. Um, my experiences have all been really great. We do really fun projects in our department. They're very real world projects. We often talk about how we have very diverse um, set of skills when you graduate from here. Um, Mark kind of talked about it already, but the beer program is really, um, or the beer uh, project, not program, the beer project is really um, an intense, awesome experience that you go through as a junior designer. Uh, you get to, you have to lay everything out. You have to figure out how it works. You have to put it together and make sure it sticks and you're spending hours on it and really intense conceptual work as well. We do put a lot of practice into thought into our programming and into our projects, which just is a great way to make your work really stand out. <clears throat> and so that's really a lot of how our experiences work here. Um, you just get a lot of great um, ideas flowing through, a lot of great um, advice, critiques, everything. It's really great. Um, as well as on campus, I'm pretty involved with things. I'm involved with our student activities camp, um, activity uh, event program here on campus. We do a lot of fun of events for students. So we're very involved um, on campus, obviously not this semester, but usually our campus is pretty um, busy with uh, events and fun things for students to do and ways for students to get out and learn as well. Um, yeah. It's really a great program. The graphic design I can especially speak to, but I've also taken a lot of art classes as part of our liberal arts student requirements. So I've taken a painting class and um, sculpture classes and everything. And they're so great. And those professors are awesome as well. 
you really just get a really enriched experience here, uh, having that global arts education as well as part of the program. So definitely um, an amazing experience being here at Muskohanna. So to speak on music, it's the same story as Annie, where there's somebody from my high school where I heard about Susquehanna for the first time. But what really made me want to come to Susquehanna was my first experience on campus where I had a lesson with my flute teacher, Leslie Cullen. Uh, the faculty are definitely a huge part or probably the reason that I chose Susquehanna. Uh, like Dr. Sina talked about with the department size was perfect, everything fell into place. But what I really found in that first mini lesson, and I know I saw a couple of aspiring music majors in the chat, uh, take a look at your applied studies teachers, work with them, meet them, get along great with them and go to that school. Uh, but I was held to a level of excellence right from my first lesson where she said, this is something that's really not great about your flute playing, but here's every resource I can give you on how to fix that. And that's when I knew like, Leslie Cullen is who I'm gonna work with. This is where it's gonna be. And I have had the best experience with her and every fac faculty member since then. Um, and with that faculty experience right from day one, that's one of the uh, huge reasons that I've I've, I've definitely excelled at Susquehanna, but one of my favorite memories of the department is this faculty new music ensemble that our orchestra director put together this past year, where three students uh, along with myself got to work with our faculty who are all these incredible performers. And we got to play along stage with Dr. Wiley, this incredible violinist and our applied studies teacher for violin. And just to be given that opportunity to not only work with each other as colleagues on the stage that we always get to work on with each other, but to work with our faculty was so awesome. So definitely all these great. I freeze so much with my terrible Wi-Fi. Oh no, sorry. I, uh, I'm currently student teaching right now and I live in an apartment with very bad Wi-Fi. So I'm doing my best here, but I think that's all I have to say about Susquehanna and the music department and the awesome experiences, not only that I've had with my colleagues and my peers, but the faculty here too. Hey, so I'm Annabelle Lucas. I'm a senior year theater performance major. Um, how I heard about Susquehanna is actually a little silly. Um, my band director wanted me to be like a music major and he kept signing me up for the Susquehanna Honors Band like without telling me, he would be like, oh, like I'm doing this, I'm signing you up for this. And I was like, okay. Um, and I never got the chance to go because it just never worked out timing wise, but he recommended this as such like an excellent, he used the word excellent a lot, um, like program for music majors. And it's one of the best ones like he knows of and he knows a lot of schools. Um, the reason I picked Susquehanna though was because I was looking at a lot of different theater programs and in a lot of those programs, they only let you pick one thing and you have to focus on that. So you're streamlined and um, conservatories are very intense. So you don't get a chance to work on other things and I didn't know what I wanted to do. So I was looking at Susquehanna and I sent Professor Viker a lot of emails and was asking a lot about the program and it sounded like they were very open to me not knowing what I wanted to do and trying out everything. So when I got here, I came in as a studies major and I worked in the costume shop. I worked as the props manager. I worked um, as a scenic painter. I started being a carpenter for the department. I was performing in things. I was doing everything. And like throughout the years, I've kind of um, finished doing some of those things. Like I just decided it wasn't for me, but I tried it and I learned a lot through those experiences. And I don't think at any other program I would have been able to do so many things. Um, but as a senior now, I've found different things that I fit well into and work well with. And I just think it's really amazing how Susquehanna has allowed me to have those experiences that are so beneficial in um, like life and my career. Like I have knowledge that so many um, people who go through conservatory programs didn't get the chance to work on and didn't get the chance to build those skills. So now it makes me more marketable when it does come to the career field and I can do so many things. It's very exciting. Yeah, that's how I got to Susquehanna. Thank you so much, Annabelle. Um, we had a couple of questions about collaborations between departments and in particular, 
um, the opera program. So uh, Dr. Steinau, could you speak a little bit about um, opera theater and maybe the ways in which you collaborate with uh, your colleagues in the visual and performing arts? Sure. Um, the, we have the opera studio um, and we do different things depending on what year it is and how many students we have at the at the moment, as Professor Viker said, and he showed a couple pictures from, from productions from a while ago, um, sometimes we do a full production with orchestra and sets and costumes and everything in Dagenstein Theater where the, where the theater department is housed. Um, sometimes we do something in Stratansky Hall in, in our own buildings, which might be a little smaller scale. Um, sometimes we do scenes this year, um, we'll do in the spring scenes from operettas, from American operettas and Viennese operettas. And the reason we're going that with that is because we still don't know, um, even by the end of spring, whether we'll be allowed to rehearse live and in groups or whether we're still going to be having to do things on a, on a much smaller scale. And, and operettas happen to feature almost exclusively solos, duets, maybe trios, but not much bigger. So so we're going with a with a safe choice and also really interesting repertoire that I think people by and large don't don't know. Um, uh, but we've done all kinds of full productions with um, with the theater department, um, unusual operas, a few well known things like Johnny Skeeky and Swore Angelica by Puccini, and then some really off the beaten track stuff, which has been great. Um, we have to choose carefully because it's all undergraduate students. What's great about that is that you aren't competing with graduate students with older singers for roles, but we have to be very careful about opera with, with 18, 19, 20, 21 year olds. We can't, we can't um, do things that, I mean, we can't do La Boheme or Don Giovanni or something like that. We, we couldn't do that to young voices. So we have to, we have to be, we have to be um, conservative. So that you are, we're, we're building voices, especially at, at this at this young age. Um, and then we also do the musical in the fall with the with the Department of Theater. So that's another another collaboration. So I hope that answers that that question. Uh, we had another quick question about uh, the application and audition process, um, or in the case of art and graphic design, the portfolio. So Mark, do you wanna talk quickly about um, the portfolio requirements and then we'll move over uh, to Eric to follow up on that. Yes, we do have a portfolio requirement for graphic design and for studio art, obviously not for art history. Um, we have a, a wonderful little instruction sheet for students that I, I'm happy to email. Um, if anybody would like to email me and request that sheet, I can, you know, we can start communicating about that. Uh, I guess the only thing that I would say about our portfolio process, it's it's not a, a it's not a competitive process in the sense that if you watch American Idol, they always do a dramatic episode where there are two singers left and only one of them can have the spot. Uh, we don't have situations like that. We will always err on the side of giving both the people, both the people, the seat. Um, we just use the portfolio, the portfolio to to ensure that the students who are applying to our program are serious about what they're getting themselves into and have an understanding of what it'll and demonstrate some capabilities, but really just have an understanding of what it'll be like to be a collegiate art or design student. Um, and, and, and often the act of making the portfolio, of the act of just having the portfolio and submitting it shows us that you're serious. So we care less about the quality of the work in the portfolio than we do about, um, you know, just the, the commitment level of the student. Would anyone else like to chime in about uh, auditions? Um, I can quickly share with you that for, oh, sorry, go ahead, Eric. No, all right, so I can weigh in that uh, Annabelle kind of covered it in the chat and I appreciate that. 
uh, but to illuminate a little further, we don't require an audition for admission. Uh, as a VA program, we recognize that it's better for us to chart a course for you or a path for you through courses uh, based on your skills and abilities. And so your first audition is almost always the musical audition uh, when you arrive in your freshman year, first year student year, but it's often not, sometimes the other, it's the non-musical. Either way, we see your work very quickly upon your arrival because all performance majors are required to audition for main stage shows. And we're able to then, then work a path for you. For students who are interested in production design, although we don't require a portfolio, I do encourage examples of your work. I mean, many high school students don't have truly a portfolio of design because rarely are high school students uh, able to design on, on, on a main stage. But uh, some sort of resume or samples of work help because then we know whether we're going to put you right in into an assistant uh, designer position with Professor Stroman or, or start more slowly and build you in some of the more uh, elementary courses in the world of design productions. Uh, but it's, um, it's, I also saw a question I thought I want to mention about double majoring programs separate from the arts. And the answer is yes. Um, we see a lot of double majors in theater from uh, communications and business and and one of my favorites was the physics student because he's in my stagecraft class and I'm talking about the basics of structural design, you know, why we build what it's very doing. I keep looking and saying, was, was that good? You're right. Because he's the physicist guy. And I'm not, or I am, but I'm not. And it was fun because he was able to kind of weigh in on that from a standpoint of his science. Um, so yeah, we see a lot of double majors and I, the Department of Theater recognizes that, that um, we do as, as a, course of instruction, we do complement other majors quite well. And it also kind of ties into people's interests that, that we're able to make the double major work. We go out of our way for that. Um, really quickly, from the perspective of uh, the music department, uh, there is an audition process which takes place following your admission to the university. Um, much like all of our peer schools across the country, that happens virtually this year um, by submission of video and then a follow-up um, virtual meeting and interviews with the faculty where we assess basic musicianship skills and get to know our candidates a little bit better. We much prefer and will very much miss those in-person activities this year. Um, but um, just so that you are aware, students are permitted to visit campus at this time um, for limited tours of our facilities. Um, but most other activities, um, conversations with faculty um, will be, will continue to happen um, virtually for the foreseeable future. Sarah, I saw there was a question about our photography program. So let me talk about that for a few seconds. Um, yeah, so photography is one of our concentrations in the BA and studio program. And I, it is sort of important for me to answer this question because our, our photography program is sort of unique in the sense that it's, um, it's a very commercially driven photography program. And part of the reason why that is, is that the dominant program in the department is graphic design. And so it's often graphic design students that are populating the photography courses. And so that's what they're most interested in. Uh, but the courses that we offer in the photography program, we are fortunate to still have a dark room. So we have a black and white traditional photography course, but we're offering courses. Um, and when I say it's more commercially driven, things like um, photojournalism, portrait photography. Um, our photography teacher has a lot of that experience. And so he'll talk about things that are sort of seemingly as mundane as shooting weddings and shooting with studio lighting. Um, so it's, um, it's, yeah, I mean, our, our facilities are strong. Our teacher is strong. Um, but our, our focus in our photography program is definitely not um, particularly avant-garde. It's, it's far more career oriented and commercial photography oriented. I'm just um, 
heading back through the chat to make sure that we've addressed the most um, pressing questions that have come up. Um, if you scroll back through the chat a little bit, you'll see that um, we've shared um, social media links to Instagram, uh, to Facebook. You can find those things relatively easily from the university's uh, website, suscu.edu, and then backslash the name of the department. I think most of those are linked um, to the academic on the academic department's website as well. Sarah, could I jump in just for a quick second? I noticed that there was uh, there were a few people from interested in performance, but there was early on I saw somebody interested in costuming, and I wanted you to sort of tout that our costume shop is professionally staffed. Uh, with, a, with an MFA holding designer and technician, uh, but, but largely run through the work of students who are uh, trained with by the Zenis, our costume artists, and then have the opportunity to do design and wardrobe operations on their own. Annabelle down below has done something uh, similar in the world of, of stagecraft and design, and that she's, she's one of our more prolific scenic painters, as well as being a, a, a capable and uh, skilled actor. Uh, there's a, a opportunities for performance and, and for, for operations skills as well. Annabelle, very quickly, can you just share kind of what you do as a staff member of the department? Um, so I'm currently staffed as the senior carpenter. So um, I work with Professor Viker. Um, he's our technical director also for our shows. So he helps take Professor Stroman's designs and turns them into blueprints that I have to direct students through our stagecraft class to build um, and teach them like the building process and how we put together these giant sets and then how we take them down throughout the season. I also see that question about theater studies. The theater studies emphasis is uh, curated by Dr. Anna Andes, who is a uh, theater historian and play director. It's, it's, it looks at first glance like a generalist program because it captures elements of designing and performance and, and theater history, um, but it, it's a place where we put our, our emerging dramaturgs, our theater historians, our um, theater education people, students who want to get involved in, in either becoming educators or being in the world of that community education component of regional theater that's becoming so, so popular. Um, so we, it's, it's where we ground those students who want to move into the world of, of um, audience engagement, audience development, as well as more classic theater history and performance studies and the study of, of, the, of drama as a literary form. Um, quickly, Kathleen, on the music performance end, could you just share the the range of ensembles that students can participate in? For sure. I know I myself have been involved at one time. I was in chamber singers, choir, orchestra, symphonic band, as well as stadium band on tuba, which was a blast. I'm a flute player, so that was quite the experience. Um, but uh, along with that, uh, oh, my bad Wi-Fi. There I am. <laughs> along with that, other programs at Susquehanna include our, our jazz ensemble and also quite a bit of small chamber groups. So I've been a part of uh, student-created ensembles. So I've been in a uh, flute and uh, string quartet. I've been a part of the flute choir. And there have also been smaller collaborations with just uh, piano trios and really anything student created with a faculty coach is totally possible. I don't know, I don't think I'm missing anything there, but Sarah, you can correct me or Dr. Steinow. I think opera is probably the only thing you haven't been in that I, that of all the things you, what, did you say jazz band? Are you, have you been in jazz I didn't, band? I haven't done that here. No, no thank you. Yeah. yeah. Andrew C. and Lauren C., could you guys check the chat when you get a second? I asked you a question in there.
Um, it looks like we have about four minutes until the sort of official end of our conversation tonight. Um, I wanted to just open it up to our panelists, if there was anything in particular that you, um, that you desperately wanted to share that you have not been able to do so yet. Um, I can't, I mean, it's, we really covered a, a really broad range of topics this evening and I'm, I'm very grateful for uh, your participation. So we'll give it another second to see if any more questions come in via the chat. Um, yeah, you know, in the movie Wayne's World, Wayne and Garth go to the Alice Cooper concert. Do you guys remember that? And they're like, you know, they're impressed by Alice Cooper. Not that we're impressive or anything like that, but they're like super impressed with Alice Cooper. And then Alice is like, come on in and hang out with us and everything. So that's kind of how we feel um, as faculty members here at SU. Students, um, prospective students and current students are often worried that they're taking up our time, but instead we're like, no, let's hang out for a little while. So, and, I, and I'm sure I speak for everybody on this, but a, a session like this is, is sort of useful as an introduction to our programs um, and to the university, but I promise you that you'll get so much more out of a conversation if you contact us directly and we'll be happy to sit down and Zoom with you or your parents, um, you know, where, where we can answer your specific targeted questions. Um, cannot recommend that strongly enough, even if you're, um, um, oh, hey, Lauren, I asked, Sorry, I asked you guys if you got a package in the mail from me, um, but you can just type that in. Um, I, sent, I think I sent you a package. Um, and if I didn't, you'll be getting a package from me in the mail at some point. I just wanted to see if you guys had gotten them yet. Um, anyways, but like I said, email me in, email me, email uh, Professor Viker, email Dr. Steinow, um, email other professors um, in, in the areas of your interest. and. Email these students; they'll be happy. Yeah, I was I was going to say the same thing is that I often bounce uh, interests questions to directly to Annabelle, in fact, or other students yeah. who can give you the skinny. I mean, without without you yeah, feeling that sure. you're getting some sort of professorial spin on things. I mean, our theater department pretty much runs a theater company right alongside the academics, and it's run entirely by the students. I mean, student student production management, patron services, a student run box office, a student managed house management, as Adam else had the scene shot. I mean, you all thrive on sort of a benevolent neglect. I mean, we teach you in the classroom, tell you what you need to know, and then watch you succeed and or fail uh, and learn from it. So that's, you know, it's, it's I think, like Professor Pershing said, come hang out with us. I mean, we, my students are my colleagues, and you're the future of, of my art, so I need to make sure you're ready to go. Yeah, and I gotta say, in our department, we're not like those stuffy music nerds. We go by our first names, so you know, you know how they are in music, right? Yes, yes. We're in the same building. Mark, music and music and art are in the same the same building. Um, so um, I, I want to echo something that Kathleen said, which is um, that for for those of you who are interested in in music, to get in touch with the which with whoever teaches your instrument. Um, and Sarah or I can can help you with that. You can find the person on the website, but you can also just me, email me or Sarah, and we can put you in touch with the person who teaches your instrument, because it, it, it that is one of that that will be the you know probably the crucial relationship in your time here. And so you want to make sure you click with that with that person. And we are all happy to give lessons, um, trial lessons. I mean, this year it'll be on Zoom, but or we can even just have a conversation, as 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 you heard before. But that that's something you can definitely take advantage of. Well, as you can see, all of our email addresses are now in the chat and are very easily found on the university website, suscu.edu. Um, I'd like to thank all of our panelists for being here this evening. And for those of you who stuck with us through the entirety of our presentation,
thank you. Have a wonderful evening slash afternoon. And uh, we look very much forward to hearing from you all. Okay. Have a wonderful evening. Thanks so much. Thank you.